phones on. Everybody here needs to be here. Okay. If, if you'd like, please join me in prayer. In the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, as we gather tonight to do the business of this district, we ask for your guidance. We ask for you to help us to understand the positions before us and the positions of each other as we do the business of this district. We ask for your protection over all the people in our district, all children, parents, teachers, and staff. Help them stay healthy and help us make the best decisions we can given our current circumstances. In your name I pray, amen. amen. I call this meeting of the Kennedale Independent School District to order. Let the record show that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551, May go into closed session during this meeting. If so, I'll cite the subsection. Let's go to the pledge. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America States of and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. like we have everybody here, including our virtual members. And we got one uh, item of correspondence from the Tate family. I guess everybody saw that, thanking us. And then public comments, we had a, a question posed about uh, bell schedules and that and, and our administrative office is going to enter that question directly to uh, uh, Colleen Bruce. So that brings us down to the consent agenda. Were there any comments over there? Oh. Mm -hmm. Nothing over there. Okay. Colleen Bruce. Colleen Bruce, yes. So that brings us down to the consent agenda. All items underneath the setting can be approved with a single motion, unless there's been anything called in or questions asked. Nope. I'll stand for a motion. I make a motion to approve all items on the consent agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Brings us down. Business requiring action. Okay. The TASB Board of Directors nomination for Region 11. What is our, is there any leanings on this? I know many of them. I'd like to recommend Karen uh, with Mansfield ISD. So the one correspondence that we received was from the gen gentleman from Denton. He's the only one that sent anything to the board members. Uh, we received an email. Huh? We received an email from Karen Marucci. I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Well, my only comments with regard to it is, um, you know, right now the TASB board is primarily from large districts. Um, there aren't a lot of representatives from smaller districts. and. If I mean, the smallest district in this group of, of applicants is uh, the one from Little Elm. Mm -hmm. Little Elm has 8,100 students, which is, again, three times our size. Um, the things that I want to consider, or I would ask to consider, would be obviously the duration of service on the board, because I do think it makes uh, an impact when you've served a long enough period of time to really kind of experience a number of issues. Um, you know, and, and I, I know Karen, and I think she is a great lady, does a great job down there. The only reservations I have have to do with the method of board governance. Um, I mean, they, they follow primarily the Lone Star governance model. Uh, TASB, you know, basically has exceptional governance. Um, and so I, I don't know that that'll be an issue, um, but I, I, I do. I do want to preserve, and I want our, our TASB directors to preserve the independence of our districts across the state, and the Lone Star governance had its origin in kind of a directive model for school boards. So again, I don't know Karen's personal feelings on it, I just know they follow that model. 
Okay. It looks like the Little Elm superintendent has been on the board since 2014. So there's some experience, at least on his local board. Yeah, he, he served six years. I mean, the longest serving one was Mr. Ryan from Crowley. He served eight years. Um, you know, I, 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 and I'm probably like Michael, I do like the fact that Karen is adjacent to us, which probably gives us a little bit of an ear, which is not a bad thing. No. Um, but I just, I, I do think it's, you know, my, my concerns are, you know, maybe having some small district representation would be a, a good cross section for the state. I don't know Deleon English at all. I can't really comment on the person. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I think to your point, I don't know if Little Elm represents small district representation, <laughs> small compared to uh, big districts, but definitely not small like us. Well, it's just hard to get small districts to volunteer for that role. I mean, small district members, uh, you know, it's hard to get through the nomination process because you kind of get winnowed down and you've got a, a big district with more opportunities to support you. Um, you know, I, I'm okay with Karen. I like Karen. I mean, I'm not saying I'm opposed to her. I'm just raising that as something for us to consider. And we don't need to spend all night on it either. Yeah, yeah. I, there's, I, I've kind of looked up some of the other board members. I really didn't see him. I remember running into him in any uh, summer leadership trainings or anything. So yeah, my recommendation for me, it, it would be Karen. Ms. Fine. And we're recommending what two? No, we only select one, don't we? We only select, select one. one. Right. Okay. I'll stand for a motion. Anyone? You hear that, Michael? Yeah, I'm sorry. I was <laughs> trying to pop it up there. <laughs> Uh, I make a motion to endorse um, Karen, how, how do you say her last name? I'm Marucci. Sorry. Marucci. Marucci and uh, Mansfield ISD to fill a position of the TASB Board of Directors. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Next item is our Xerox agreement and that basically was uh it's time for our copy releases to uh, be uh, redone and Ms. mason put that this together and the recommendations before you any, any discussions questions we can ask Ms. mason or mr adams <laughs> okay. and this is kind of an odd question does anybody know like IBM has had a significant reduction in force. Is Xerox, has anybody heard that they're going through a workforce reduction which might affect their support and their, their, their I mean, primarily the support system? I, I haven't heard anything, I'm just asking. Has anybody heard anything? I have not. Okay. I have not heard anything like that. All I've heard is at the corporate level, Are, are good, bad, and a loss of personnel. They're not reducing that one force because at the corporate level, I have heard of So this is every machine that we have? Hey, Jimmy, could you go to the microphone? I don't know if the guys are on the like, Thank you. Uh, we have 28 copiers in our fleet. The combined, I mean, we got proposals from seven different companies, and and uh, Miss Mason and myself uh, graded the proposals, and Xerox came out on top for both of us. So, is that service in, in cost? Yes, it's unlimited black and white. Of course, I didn't ask for any color copiers. <laughs> Good. Questions? Thank you, Mr. Adams. 
I make a motion to approve a five-year lease and agreement with Xerox Business Solutions Southwest for district copiers based on the information presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. aye. Motion carries. Okay. Date and time for public meetings for the budget. Tax. Basically, we have to decide when we want to set the uh, meetings. We have a regular meeting on the 21st, scheduled for the 21st, which would be the third Thursday. Am I correct, Ms. Williams? 20th. 20th, sorry, the 20th. And then we're looking at doing the budget and tax rate meeting in that window between the 24th and the 28th. So is it better to do like a Tuesday or a Monday? 24th and 27th, sorry. Tuesday would be the 25th. Are y'all going to do that the day before first day of school? Do what? Yeah, the 20. Or the teacher, I mean, I don't know. 26th. 25th, 24th, 25th, yeah. 26th and 27th would be after the first day of school. Yeah, we probably got to get in before that's all approach on people. What's your preference? I'd suggest the 25th, Tuesday the 25th. 25th, Tuesday. Is that good for you guys? Okay. I'm looking at my calendar. Y'all are the ones that have to work on yeah. <laughs> Start what? everything on this, the next day. Yeah, 20. I mean, the only question is two more days help you in terms of getting, I mean, is it close? It's going to be close enough we can do it? Uh, assuming, <laughs> assuming the appraisal district sends me the information they're supposed to send tomorrow, it should not be an issue. Uh, we have to publish between 10 and 30 days before the meeting, so uh, assuming I get that information tomorrow, I can get that information computed out. I mean, we'll have, we have like four different tax rates now. Uh, no new taxes. The old, I mean, which is the equivalent of the old rollback rate. Uh, we have a compressed rate. I forget what the names of all the others are, but uh, they're all have to be computed. So was, was there any comment from after Hager's statement yesterday about the $12 billion shortfall? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, if we have $12 billion in this biennium, it did I mean, that's not a good sign for what we're going to have next biennium. I, mean, I get it. We're short by $12 billion now. Uh, I just, is there any chance that either they they can't change all the rules for the tax rate yet. They could in after I mean, meet in January. But. We're just, I mean, the legislature comes back in January, so I'm not sure what's going to happen there. Well, you know, we're going to have a terrible problem if we set the rate based upon anticipated revenue from the state, and that's drastically cut. Right. But that'll be for the next year, not I, this, this I know, coming next year. Year, so. It still doesn't mean they're not gonna argue about a buy-in and cut city. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Health and Human Services is only budgeted for about 18 months anyway. They always come back once the legislature meets and finish out the last six months of their budget. Uh, I don't know where they're gonna get the money uh, other than having to take it out of the rainy day fund. And to me, a p global pandemic has got to be a flood. It's not just a uh, rain. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Need a motion. I make a motion to set the special public meeting of the school board, decide on the budget and proposed tax rate to be scheduled for Tuesday, August twenty fifth, twenty fifth, two thousand twenty at seven p.m. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. All right, superintendent's report. Okay, UTA was supposed to do a uh, presentation on their study tonight. Their president has restricted them from being able to mm -hmm. participate. So we're looking at August for that report to come out. You do have the report. Uh, in your books to review, and then we will get a uh, more in-depth presentation hopefully in August. 
And that might be good. It gives us a chance to look at it and have better questions. And that, that was my thought was it will give you time to look through it and formulate questions for them that you want them to address. And if you'll get those questions to me, I can get those to them for to make sure that they address it in their presentation. Okay. Okay. Good. Any other comments on that one? Is there, um, I, I did look through it a little bit. It's, it's pretty comprehensive, obviously. Is there a certain, Mr. G or, or you know, trustees that have been through this before, is there a certain focus or thing that we should be kind of looking in there as we, as we analyze the data? Um, I guess I was just, it, it just seemed like it covered a lot of information. I wasn't sure exactly what I was supposed to be trying to look for. I believe we're looking at our growth patterns and where our future growth is going to be as far as our boundaries for our schools and what our potential, you know, impact on our buildings would be for the future. So. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I think I concentrate on those last couple of pages more than anything. Projections by school. Um, that was pretty informative or scary or it's it's pretty in depth and got a lot of uh, information in it. So, but that's why I was they were going to do the presentation so they could break it down more for you. So, and uh, so we will hopefully have that in August because it may be allowed to come come visit. If not, we'll have to do it a different way. I mean, you can look at it, Michael. They're saying that high school and junior high have plenty of facility for our numbers, even with their projections. Where we have deficiencies appear to be at the elementary schools in terms of the way the numbers line up. So I, you know, I, we're back to that discussion we talked about already of, you know, rebound, draw new boundaries or realign grades in buildings. So that's probably what I, I'm going to look at is try to figure that out with those, those numbers. Thank you. Okay, federal grant application information. Okay, and this is just informational for you guys. Um, the federal grant application, we have to uh, provide you with this um, so this is mr adams provided the uh, federal grants that applications that we're going to be applying for this year okay any comments okay dawson aside okay and this letter correspondence letter came in from an uh, attorney group that represents uh landholders land owners sorry <laughs> landholders landowners for uh the uh tech stock They've been in these situations with TxDOT before and eminent domain. So this is just something to keep on your radar. Uh, if you feel like this is a, a group that we need to contact, then I can get in contact with them and make sure that we're, uh, we're in good shape with the uh, TxDOT project that's coming. And I would, I mean, Glenn Saad was one, is one of the best condemnation attorneys in the state. He's got a great reputation. Uh, I have nothing but respect for him and his firm, but I'd also say that it isn't necessarily needed yet. I mean, we go through a commissioner's hearing, you know, uh, we can have that conversation and, and you know, if TxDOT is unreasonably low, I think we can get some ideas of how unreasonably they are and their offer and then talk about retaining somebody. I don't think you have to do it in advance necessarily. It's probably better for Glenn and company because they know who they're you know, if they have a block of people, they know what they're dealing with. For us, I'm assuming it's the access road on 287 and the way the off-ramp for sublet will be moved as it comes in there and it will affect our property somehow. And I don't know how it affects us and doesn't affect the Kroger. <laughs> and maybe it does affect the Kroger, but I mean, we're all on the same line there. So it may be the way they have to configure the off-ramp affects us more because we're further north. But I mean, I. I I have nothing but praise for Glenn and company, but I don't know if we have to jump on them until we get further in that process. And that correspondence came in, uh, just making you aware, y'all aware of the, the potential with, with there. Okay. Just so you know, he did a lot of work on the Cowboy Project. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we do need to keep that on our radar, for, but I, I agree with John. We can probably wait until we get a little bit further along in the process. Um, okay, upcoming meetings. No, oh, D. Yeah, I was going to tell you about the on Monday or oh, excuse me Tuesday. Uh, 
afternoon, the uh, commissioner's court met, and then County Judge uh, Whitley came out with, with a order at 1135 uh, stating that all Tarrant County schools would be closed until after Labor Day through the 27th of uh, September. So we will be virtual up until that time. Uh, so we will still be starting school. We had already that, the, that Thursday before had voted to push our calendar back to the 26th of August. We'll stay with that calendar. We will just start virtually on the 26th. So giving you that update. Uh, the plan that we presented at the last meeting will also be in effect. We, it will continue to be a work in progress as, we, as things develop, but we will be staying with that reopening plan as well. Okay, good. Any idea on when the teachers will be able I'm to get I, back in? I can't hear very well. Oh, I'm sorry. I say any idea on when the teachers will um, get a chance to get into their classrooms at this point? It's Depending on the Yeah, the roof. I was assuming that, you know, you know my, my bad if I was assuming. I thought they were already being able to be allowed into their, their classrooms. So I, if they're not being allowed to, then I need to know that. Mike at the last meeting said they were allowed. They weren't. They were. They were. Yeah. At the last okay. I think they just having to be organized with their principals. Okay. And I, I don't think at least one of the principals, but the one that I'm thinking of has, has told her group to go back into it. Um, part of it may be because of the, the repairs being done, the roof. I'm sorry, I just, I'm having I know. A, my, my Here, let me go back. Y'all go. No, uh, uh, because <laughs> of the roofing uh, repairs that were being done, it probably hasn't let some of them back into the. Yes, the roofing repairs. We, we hit a few snags on the roofing repairs. You know, the CIA building, we had the issues with the. Uh, uh, Raptors that had to be repaired, but then that kind of slowed down some of the other areas. But they have been moving along pretty quick. They moved more crews onto the sites, more workers to facilitate it faster. But I think some of the uh, the smell and all of that, and the, 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 it's not really a safety hazard with the debris. It's just more the smell, and the smell is pretty can be pretty bad. So okay. But other than that, I think they they can go in. It's so you're going to tell the order. principals that they can go in. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good. Well, don't leave this yet. I, you know, the unspoken issue is how are we going to do this? How are we going to do? I mean, we've, we've had some pretty bad governance process right now with about the way we're conducting our meetings, you know, and I don't like it. I think we need to talk about it. You know, we need to be on the same page about how we're doing this. One way or the other, we need to be on the same page. I mean, having concerns about appearing in person, you know, and it, it turns into a, a, you know, an issue that it shouldn't be for us. We ought to, as a board, decide what we're going to do and do it. I know a couple of weeks ago we decided. We decided to be live. You know, have circumstances changed enough where we need to say, okay, they're changed enough, maybe we go back to virtual for a period of time. I'm just, I, I don't want to be hearing about it in the community of, you're not wearing masks, you're not doing this, we as a board need to figure out what we're going to do and, and you know and, and use good governance in doing it whatever it is so I, I you know we schedule a meeting in august is it going to be live or is it going to be virtual well i would say that we now with the help of uh fop productions um, you know the, the two gentlemen sitting in the back of the room who were here at the last meeting they they are the ones who reconfigured the media center their company and you know the reason we're able to do what we're doing tonight is because they uh, worked tirelessly last night and uh, through the day today to make sure that this was possible and you know they're at you know <laughs> a lot of time and effort on their part as well as mr franklin's time and effort to make this happen you know uh, they it wouldn't have happened but they loaned us a piece of equipment that would take us a while to get ordered and get in and they actually loaned us the equipment to be able to make this happen. So, you know, I, I want to thank them for their efforts, but, you know, this is, it, 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 it wasn't a cut and dry easy solution. You know, it took a lot of people thinking and a lot of work and effort to get it done and a lot of t man hours to get it done. And that's, uh, that's where we kind of sit there. As far as being able to do, do this at the next meeting, uh, we should be able to, our August meeting, we should be able to run it just like we're running it now. So. Okay, that, that's issue one. Okay. okay. Issue two is, are we going to be ADA compliant in this process? You know, is that, is that the plan? Issue three is, are we continuing to follow the model that we record our meetings and we 
post the recordings or are we attempting to make a virtual presentation that's available the moment we are having our meetings? The way it's configured right now, we are compliant because we're recording and we put it out later and we put it out through YouTube that has a free service. You know, we are not live streaming this right now. Uh, uh, we are not, because it is a public meeting, we are not required by law, which is the, the stuff that I sent you from uh, Ms. Williams for the, from the TASB. We are not required by law by our size to actually record our meetings. We choose to record our meetings and put them out there, but to do it live is a ADA compliance issue, which is an additional cost to the district to sit there and make that happen. And to do it live, uh, we would have to get estimates on how much that would cost to be able to be in compliance with the uh, uh, ADA. And that's the governance process that we should go through. We as a board should decide, are we going to that step? We need to talk about it and have the numbers. You know, I, I think it's inappropriate. I mean, we as a board decide how and when our meetings will take place. It's not your job, that's our job. I well, thank you for that, because um, I, I feel like, you know, <laughs> y'all devoted to me in person. I, I'm just trying to facilitate the meetings. And, you know, I feel like a lot of weight is being put on my staff and me to sit there and, and facilitate things that we weren't it, it, when we've got other things going on. So. And I respect everybody in this room. Everybody's wearing a mask. Nobody had to tell you to, and I appreciate that. I mean, I, I think that says something about our district and the people here. But, you know, we as a board ought to be taking these steps and not putting you and, and Brian, you know, running tizzies to try to accomplish something that we didn't work our way through. You know, I know we voted several weeks ago to be live. You know, I'm asking, are we comfortable with that decision now, given the way COVID has changed in its, its rate of infection right now? We have the county telling us we can't even have our kids here live. And, and we accept now, we accept the idea that the quality of education from live instruction is something we just have to sacrifice a little bit. I think personal meetings between us are better, but I'm asking in the same analysis, is it better for us to accept a different route so that there's no question, there's no argument, we don't have to spend time defending why we're meeting live? You know, that, that's my question. Can okay. I say something? I mean, I've been thinking about this, um, and I guess my thoughts on, the, on it all was, we are his boss, and we ask him to come every day and to work hard and we're putting him, we're expecting him to follow the guidelines and do what he needs to do. All of these, several of these people, most of them, there's a few extras, but most of these people come every day mm -hmm. and we, they don't say, hey, I'm gonna stay at home, I'm gonna work from home, I can't come in. There's only a few of us here, we are social distanced. We go to work and do our job and we do it and we follow the rules, we wear our masks, we do, what we need to do but if we want Julie Vu to show up every day and to work hard and do a job and stuff then to me it's hard for me to look her in the eye and say but I don't want to come to a meeting so that's where I am if I can go to work if y'all can come to work then I can come be spread out and stand and sit here in a meeting that's Leslie's viewpoint and I, 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 in a lot of respects, I agree with you. I'm not, I'm not saying I want to do this remotely. I think we do a better job live. But I am saying we shouldn't have to be dealing with community comment about the way we conduct a meeting when we as a board made a decision that we thought was best for the way we operate our board. And I just want to air that, and I want us to get, to get beyond the issue and back to doing what we're supposed to be doing, which is focus on how we monitor student performance. How we conduct the meeting isn't important. How we monitor student performance and our superintendent is. And I mean, I, I, Agreed. I, I just want us to get, you know, let's take the vote, let's make it, let's air it out, let's have the conversation, because it's just not good governance not to do that. One thing I think you're missing in this small caveat of all of this is even before COVID, we were allowed to dial in virtually or call in. So it doesn't have to be a straight across the board vote to be there in person or not. That's our right. And that's something we just haven't utilized in the past. I think to Leslie's point, that's your personal choice. Your personal choice is to go on vacation and to go out and to go to church. Everybody has their own personal comfort in this. 
So saying yours is better than someone else's and that you're not comfortable looking someone in the eye is completely different than the person sitting next to you in different situations. I think it is a personal thing and my We lost you, Julie. Lost you. That, as long as that is able, just the way that we were supposed to from the very beginning, regardless of COVID, then I don't see a problem. We can still work through it. The only difference is Michael and I are on a computer and y'all are in a room. Yeah, I, want, I wanted to clarify what Chad was, uh, Mr. G was saying just a second ago. So. Um, I, and and I, as I said, right when I came on earlier, my head was like enormous on there. Um, I, I appreciate everyone that's put effort into this, uh, both for my own family and, and as Julie said, like our, our personal stakes in this. Um, so thank you so much again for, for doing this. Um, but to Mr. G's point, this, this will be the system that we're running right now will be intact in August, it won't take extra effort from the vendor to come out and and loan equipment and stuff. This it's is that is that the understanding that this will already be set in place sometime in August or, or in the near future? Yes. Yeah. So the so what we're doing now it will already be paid for, done, set in stone. It's here. It's utilized. Um, and you, you know, as me and Brian were talking earlier, like this is a great opportunity not only for board meetings but also to set the example for. PDs, if we want to have webinars with other districts or speakers that can't be there physically, um, you know, this is a great function. This, to, to my uh, point, I, I, when I talked to uh, Mr. Clark the other day, um, if we can do this, I, I, don't, I don't see why we wouldn't just not do it. Uh, and, and the way I thought about it, outside of the COVID, outside of all of that, from my first year when I came on, if I were to look at a board agenda and how we run the meeting, and I didn't have a date on the agenda. I wouldn't know if it was 1970 or if it's 2020. We were running exactly the same way. Um, if we have the ability to, to make it better and to uh, have more people to join, I think that's that's a good thing. And to the point of uh, the meeting and people that are in there, it may be scarce just because some people would love to be there and do a public comment or would love to be there and watch the meeting, but they don't feel comfortable doing it. So if we can offer them the ability to watch it live, and be in the know right when it happens. If that's if that's a possibility, uh, then I, I don't see why we don't explore that. Just like we would if we were teaching in a classroom. If we had a way to, to meet every kid's needs, we would meet every kid's needs. We would just say, well, we're just gonna meet some kids' needs uh, just because I feel more comfortable one way or the other. If we can meet all the needs, then then we should at least explore that. We, we have explored that. We've already been through that. Am I wrong? No, I live meetings we've already explored we've already we've already talked about the the issues with it we've talked about the cost associated with it what else do we need to discuss well i think that was with the old equipment now we're or some saying now we're dealing with this equipment here right this no it's with different. it's with any equipment it's the same problem it's the same issue with a live meeting it's the same issue you know the thing is is our district is not ADA? by law not required long. by our size to ha to produce live meetings you know, the larger school districts are required by law to, to do the live meetings. Our, our district is not. We've gone through that. You know, we've gotten the governance that, that says that, you know, there is a cost to having, you know, you have to live uh, uh, closed caption live meetings, and there is a cost with that. And, you know, that, that I mean, we, we can have, rehash I, it again in the I future, can tell but you we've already we talked have about maybe, that maybe We had the virtual meetings before. We had maybe five people on watching five people and most of those were our own employees the most that we had was 13 and that was when we had the, the uh, grade point average and those were all our curriculum people who were watching to see what you decided on we don't have a significant audience that watches you know is, it watches our, our the recordings I think we have people who come back and watch the recordings but as far as watching live they're not watching it live and you know to, to justify a cost for that I don't I don't know that it's worth it so. We've already determined it's not worth it. And y'all had told me before that we weren't doing that. So, I mean, it, and you told me before that we were meeting live in, in person. That's what we were working off of. You know. So, Michael, you think that's better to spend money on that than, than the other things we're spending money on? Well, I guess we just need to define when we say live. So, so right now, I would consider this is a live meeting and that it's a virtual it is, meeting that we hear. It Different. is not a live meeting. I, you guys are live at the meeting. 
We are not, this is not live to the community. Right, that's stream, yeah, streaming, right. So the, yeah, I, streaming obviously would be the best of, the, of, of all the worlds, but if, if it's cost uh, prohibitive, then yeah, I'm totally fine with that. I'm talking about what, what me and Julie are saying here and that uh, if we need to meet virtually, um, just like we've had some other administrators meet virtually when they were on vacation and stuff in the you know past few months, I think if, if we can continue to do this, then um, you know, I, I think that's a great, great first step. And, and Michael I, and Julie, I agree with both of you. I, when I talked to both of you, I said, I respect your concerns for your health and what you feel you need to do for your family. I, I don't have a problem with that. My issue is we don't, we're, we're not, we didn't address it in the kind of the proper order, in my opinion. We had a change, we need to talk about it. And I don't think we had a chance to talk about it before it became an issue in the community. And that's what's disappointing to me that, you know, people are calling me and saying, you need to wear your mask. I said, I am wearing my mask. You know, and, and I, I want us as a board to make cohesive, considered decisions in a proper order. Again, thankfully this vendor loaned us the equipment. I don't even know what that costs. And I'd, I'd like to know that. Uh, and it's great that we can do it, but we gotta look at the cost. If it's, if it's $5, it's no big deal. If it's 50,000 or $100,000 long-term, it might be a big deal. And, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm welcome the idea of allowing all some flexibility, but the order should have been, if there's a concern, we look at the cost, we determine that's appropriate, and, and we move in that process. And I just, you know, that's what we're not doing well as a board. I don't think we're hitting the issues in a timely order, and I'd like to hit them in a timely order where we all talk about them and we say, this is what we'll have to do, this is what it will cost, get the estimate, and address in the budget. But, you know, these people are scrambling to get an educational product out to kids and, you know, I'm assuming that they're working hard to make this work for us, right? And I appreciate that. Uh, but I just, you know, I would like for us to do a better job of discussing our board issues amongst ourselves somehow in a meeting, an appropriate meeting, and, and working those steps in order. That's what I'm about. I don't, I don't disregard what we're doing now. I, I think what we're doing is fine. I just wish we would do it in a better order. Well, yeah. and I think, I mean, to follow up your comment, I think that's what Michael and I were trying to do weeks ago when we sent an email back and said, we think virtual is better. And at that point, there wasn't a conversation to our knowledge. We were going to go virtual when asked. And next thing we know, we get a board book for in person. So maybe if we just hindsight's 2020, at that moment had more of a discussion of okay what happened what changed where how can we go from here and, and i agree with you julie i mean i i, I was kind of confused too because the question was there was a poll out that say be live or virtual i assume the poll was done and that's what chad did based upon the information the board gave him you know that that was an odd week i understand that what i am bothered by is when i get a call from our state senator asking me what in the world is going on in Canada. And I, and, you know, and I was, I had a conversation with her, said we are trying to work through the issues of protocols and safety and how we handle our board meetings. But those discussions should be with us. It shouldn't be with our state center. I don't know where she got the idea to call me. I mean, and, but and, we tried and that's, that's what's the frustrating part is that's what it takes. We tried. We. There were conversations and we even watched the board video where every one of you said, yeah, we're fine with meeting in person. No one asked Michael and I if we were fine meeting in person after that. A whole nother meeting was scheduled with in person. So then there were two missteps of miscommunication. So again, I see the point, but it what's done is done and we're here and it's working. And I agree, I agree, we move forward. I just, again, my point of the conversation is I don't wanna have issues lurking in the background that we haven't discussed and worked through. That's, okay. that's my concern. And there may be other members who have concerns now too. I don't know. Um, let me speak, I guess. Um, my understanding is at the end of each meeting, we, when we schedule the next one, we determine whether we're gonna meet in person or if we're gonna do it virtually. Um, I'm thankful, Brian and the rest of the guys, for the technology that is now added where if I can't make a meeting, I can do it virtually. That is progress. But if nothing else, we should at the end, when we 
schedule a meeting. Let's go ahead and determine at that time, this is what we'll, how we'll meet. And unless circumstances change, we will continue with whatever we agree to at the, when we schedule. If we schedule it, say, for in person, unless something changes or there's some type of uh, senses that we need to change it to something else, we should continue with that, whatever the agreement is. And if we have a quorum here, we can either vote for it or just uh, uh, raise the voices or whatever you want to call it, and we're done. You know, that's, it's I, that simple. I just want to clarify, when we say in person, is this what we're doing right now considered Correct. in person? Yes. What we're doing okay. right now, as long as we have the technology, which this is the first meeting we've had the technology to do it this right. way, uh, if we're coming to a building that is considered in person, that is my understanding of it. If we're going I, virtual, that means all of us will be calling remotely. Into, from remotely, remote, remotely, remotely. Call it, let's call it remote. Um, well, we'll I, be doing remote. I would, sorry, I, I guess I would just define this would be, I would define as a hybrid meeting in that there are some in person and some remote, but we're all together. Okay, let's uh, just put it. But like I just, this. but I just want, like I say, I just want to define when you say it, to me when someone says in person, that means there is no remote. Everyone's face to face, or okay. that's the, rather that's the only option is just face to face. Uh, where, as you said, remote would be the only option is everyone is virtual. Okay, uh, I would define this as hybrid. I just want to clarify so that way when we're because it's as I asked earlier, Mr. G, if this is already in place. Like I realize the vendors here today, but going forward, if this is already in place, um, you know, I would love to just continue using this if uh, that's oh. okay. But I just want to define. Okay, if the technology is available, if the technology is available, I think recording a meeting in a pl in in um, in a building is what I'm saying is what we're doing now. We're recording it. We're not doing it live. If we are doing it virtually, I'm understanding we do that live stream it. Okay, we don't record it. So if we're gonna do this, and like I said, if the technology is available, I would like to, you know, this is, we can agree when we schedule the next meeting, and we can do it meeting to meeting, whether or not we wanna do it by recording or remote. Okay, and if we make that agreement, there's nothing else to say about it. We're, we're yeah, we're, Drew. Just for clarification, even our our virtual meetings that we were doing were still just recorded, and they weren't live. So th those those ones that we no. did where we were all they were live. They were live. They were live. Those were live. Those were live. Yeah, we had to do those live because of the requirements by the law. Uh, because we were all virtual. Open meeting. And so. Gotcha. That, that's when you could chose to come back in here. We didn't have to have that live requirement anymore. Okay. But the problem is, is when you're live streaming, you're not ADA compliant, and there, there, therein lies the problem. Okay. I thought we were recording those. Yeah. Well, so, and, yeah. and, and just to clarify, at our last remote meeting, when everybody was remote, you all voted to come back in public. So yes. we were going off of that. So when Tracy released the, the board book for the meeting last Thursday. It was off of that recommendation that everybody meets Correct. publicly. And then we did not get an email until either the next day asking if a virtual meeting, either that day or the next day, whether it was virtual. We can't make that happen from the time that, because the meeting was scheduled on Tuesday. And we didn't have the, the, the technology or to, to know what we needed to do to be able to make that happen at the time. And Mr. Franklin stated that. Then we had the meeting on Thursday, and you all said that you wanted to be in public again. And so that's where we were, but they were minus the members that were absent. So that's what we were working off of. And to, you know, to say that there was this correspondence that, you know, all this, there wasn't correspondence. There was just a question, can we do this virtually? But at the time, to meet the time requirements, no, we could not. And I want to make sure that, that everybody understands that. Well, and I, I think this is, this is a, for, for Julie and Michael, I think it's great that we, we can accommodate whatever personal safety concerns you may have. But I, 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 I just, I can't, in my mind, there's no question that sitting in a room, physically speaking with you, is not better communication than this is. Uh, Julie's feed glitched at least twice during her discussion. 
And, you know, I don't think we missed anything too significant. It didn't sound like, but, you know, maybe we did. And it's, it's just not the same. It, it really isn't, you know. We're not built to communicate with screens. We're built to communicate face-to-face -face with each other. That's, that's the way we were created. And, uh, you know, this doesn't, you know, texting and, and uh, IMing and, and FaceTiming does not replace you know, sitting down, you know, we're parents, all of us are parents, doesn't replace sitting down and physically speaking with your children. That's, that's because that's the way we were created. So ideally, when, when you don't have, pers I, I'm all for, if you're personally concerned about your own safety, your family's safety, we can do it this way. But the goal is that we all come together physically and meet. It's, it's easier if we need to go into closed session if we need to speak over something, if we're all looking at a handout that comes out in the meeting, it'll be better for us. Better for us as a board and better for us uh, in our service to the district. Uh, there's just no question in my mind about that. So, well, and I think that's, you're welcome to your opinion. We're welcome to ours and our rights by, by that as well. Uh, my question to you is, how do you think it's going to work this school year? I mean, we're testing out the waters of virtual and in person, and this is what we are asking of our district and our kids and our teachers. Why not better try it out ourselves and say, we get it. It's hard. It doesn't work all the time, but we can right. do it. And we can do it without throwing fits. I mean, you don't want all of the parents that are going virtual with their children to say, Oh, it was glitchy. I'm not doing that. I'm pulling my kids out. I don't want I you. To pull, I don't want anybody to pull out, Julie. I, I'm glad that this this accommodates your concerns. I, I, it's great. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad Michael's here, and and I'm all for accommodating you in any way to get you included in the meeting. But you're not going to convince me that you speaking to me through a screen from your home is as good as you sitting next to me and talking in a meeting room. No, it's not it's not the same communication it's not the same board dynamic it's, there's a physical dynamic attached to being physically present with somebody else i believe that's the way we're created so you know like i say i, I i'm i'm all happy to accommodate your concerns and michael's concerns but you know i i will say that i think that it, it will it will negatively affect the inner dynamics of our board if we can't come together and meet physically ever again. So, um, that's well, I, think, I'm not, I think, I'm not saying I'll never do it again. I would say that I think if y'all said, hey, let's test this out, and we knew going in, you were doing it because we were testing out, and let's see what the teachers are like, that's a totally different thing than hearing people say all the things that they've been saying. Y'all aren't supposed to be meeting. You're not supposed to be doing this. You're not supposed to be doing that. But if we said, hey, let's try this out for the teachers because that's what they're going to do, then that would take a totally different viewpoint, at least for me, on it because it would be like, oh, we're trying to see, does this work? Oh, we got this into place. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. well, I, Back I, to Mr. Clark's, Mr. Clark's point earlier, I, I, think, I think it's fine to norm on a protocol, whatever we want to do before the meetings end to make sure that we're all in agreement as to what's happening. Uh, but when y'all did end the meeting last week, I had no clue as to what it was until the board agenda was uh, posted. Well, and I, and I, I just want to ask board clarification. I mean, we're doing the hybrid model, which I think under the Open Meetings Act requires a very specific protocol. I want to make sure we meet that protocol, whatever it is. I don't know that we're meeting it now, but we hopefully will. Uh, if we're going to accept that we use this model, I, I want to make sure that we, we, we know what the parameters of it are and that we are all supportive of it, whatever that is. Not speaking and saying, I don't like this, I'm not going to support it, either way. And thirdly, I want to know where we're going in terms of this issue that we want to live stream our meetings because that's a whole new can of worms in terms of cost, ADA compliance, etc. I don't want us violating ADA. You know, I hate to say it in the legal community, there are lawyers out there looking for work. And us violating ADA is probably a pretty easy win. 
I mean, it's because it's black and white. It's either there or it's not. And so, you know, I think that we're going to do this. It's a good test. It's a good start. But as we move forward, let's all agree on how we move forward. I'm just trying to get consensus. I want to hear what everybody thinks about where we're going with it. And it doesn't have to be today's meeting, but, you know, that's what this point of the board is about. Talk about our issues. Talk about our meetings. You know, I don't have any animus to Michael and Julie. I don't. I mean, you guys, I respect your decision. I am now going to be concerned with how I tell a staff member who says, I don't want to come to the meeting because I'm concerned. I just want to know how we handle those situations. Well, I'll assure you, I'll be glad to shake everybody's hand and, and talk to them face to face once we're out of a, a pandemic. Uh, but if, if the technology is in place and we can come to agreement um, at the end of every board meeting, how we want to conduct it, I think we'll have to be making decisions later on this year too in November and December uh, when things get ramped up with whatever the new virus is that comes around as well. So I think it's a good idea to have some sort of protocol uh, before meetings end. And then knowing if uh, maybe one change that does need to occur is if a board member is absent, uh, how do we inform that board member of what, what the decision was made or loop them in ahead of time if, if, uh, if possible. Okay. Well, I appreciate the discussion, everybody. Um, one other quick thing on this particular subject. Um, if at all possible, and I'd like to talk to um, um, Brian, could we get the turnaround as far as being able to put the videos out um, a little faster? Uh, people are looking for instant answers. We don't, we're not going to be able to give them instant answers, but at least um, be able to give them a chance to look at the videos, look and see what we discussed um, in a shortest period of time. Um, if nothing else, I'd like to look into being able to turn it around, say, two days. You know, what is the turnaround time, Brian? I'm cheating. I have a microphone back here. Can y'all hear it? Yeah. But I'm causing feedback. Um, Usually, you know, we try to get these things out within a couple of days or so. It it depends on the situation. On the, like, if there's if we this last time, uh, the, it was our first time using this equipment. We had a power problem here in the building, and and it hurt our our recorded file. And uh, these guys had to work really hard to recover what we could from it. Some of it was not recoverable, but that made it take a little bit longer than usual. I think two days is a reasonable ask on that. Um, we should at least be we, we would be able to know pretty quick um, like in this case the recorded file we've got one going straight to zoom we should be able to move that over to YouTube and let it um, add the closed captions and, and do what we need to do but I, I think two days is a reasonable ask unless there's otherwise then we'll, we'll we'll be in communication with you if there's a problem with that and like you said this last board meeting there was an issue because right. we had a power outage with the server the yeah, I mean, it was not, mostly not, due not, to the power. Here, but with the server, you know, this is new equipment, and the, the techs were here last time because they, it was the first time we were using the equipment, and right into, you know, uh, Mr. Adams' presentation, eight minutes in, we lost power. Had video, but we didn't have the audio. So they were trying to recover that, so it took longer to try to recover that, that okay. those, those videos and put them out. Yeah, I, I think two days is reasonable. I, I, yeah. And, and, and if for some reason we can't make that, we'll we'll communicate that. Okay. Good. I have one question kind of about that. Um, last meeting we talked about the calendar, and we were, you know, getting trying to get that out. I know that that was something that went out. Yes, yeah, so uh, the, the calendar was released. Before, like yeah. Mandy or whoever, you know, you did it. And that would be something that I would like to, I mean, I think that should come from y'all. I think if she needs to, you know, Friday after our meetings or whatever, get there and get it done. But seeing it all on social media from other places and people saying, well, I have an in, you know, whatever. I'm not sure how, it, but uh, it The was calendar was released, and that was a board calendar for your consideration with options. It was not a finalized calendar, you know, so that, that created problems by it being released. So we need to do that faster, but I guess us who were in here had need to let the proper people 
technical question, Brian, with regard to the power failure we had, if we were in the hybrid model that we're in now, and we lose power and we lose feed with either one of our remote um, participants under the rule, we have to stop the meeting until such time as we reestablish that connection. So if we lose power here, do we have any backup capabilities that we can reconnect relatively quickly? Can't help on their end, but if we lose power here, is there something that we can do to, you know, I, I'm not saying we pay it for a generator, but, but is there, you know, we have to think about that if we're doing this model, because if we can't connect, we have to stop the meeting and wait. If it goes more than six hours, we have to adjourn the meeting. So that's the rule on hybrid, as I understand it. So, I mean, I, I want to throw that out there that, you know, we, that's a, maybe a remote possibility, but something that we have to think about. Yeah, one of the things that uh, is, is we're certainly ordering a, a a different UPS for in here, but if we, I think you're right, if we have a, what, one of the lessons learned from last time is, is if we have a, a power glitch like that again and, and we notice the screens go off and the system has to reboot, we absolutely do have to stop the meeting and wait for that, for everything to come back online um, before, if we want to continue with the recording piece of it. Um, and that would be, and yeah, if, if, if there's an outage longer than uh, six hours, we, we've probably got some other technical problems going on here, but, uh, but yeah, it would have to be rescheduled, like you said. Um, in terms of, did, are, did, am I answering your question correctly as far as? I'm just asking, do we, is there, I, I don't, UBS isn't gonna hold this system up in a power failure. I mean, I understand that. Right. But I, I am, wanting us to be aware that if we have that kind of problem, we have to stop. We can't talk. You're right. We can't continue. I mean, we, you're right. We can't it continue not. it on. Right. Um, and uh, last time we had that we had that glitch. And we so to us, it looked like just the, the screens going off and, and everything coming back on. And we learned that there's, there's you know, there, there's problems with that. We should have stopped the meeting at that point and, and resumed it once everything was back online. If we lose either one, if we lose video or audio in the process, that rule, I, I think, applies. So I, I just, we, we, as we move forward with this, let's make sure that we're trying to anticipate those kind right. of problems. absolutely. Is that the same on either end? It's the same on either end. We lose them. Once we start yeah. a meeting in a virtual setting, if you guys, anybody remotely goes down, we have, we to, have to stop. stop and wait for them to connect back up. So just be aware of those. That we will have some limitations, particularly in the fall when we have storms come through and the spring when we have storms come through. When, when y'all, because uh, I, I wasn't there, when, when y'all say lose power, you're saying you lost power to the media center or you lost power to the server? To the server. To the server. Do we, do we expect that to continue? I'm sorry. Do we expect that to continue? Is that, has that server been a problem? No, 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 it wasn't a server problem. It was actually a power-related problem on that particular circuit, the electrical circuit that the things were plugged into. So um, I've already, we've had a discussion with Eileen about that particular uh, line we were using earlier today. We're, we're on a different circuit today. So um, we'll, we'll get those things resolved. Thank you. That was my only issue. I wanted to clear the air about what we're dealing with. That's all. I wanted to get it where. Well, it's good to know that. Page. It's good to know. I didn't. I, I hadn't thought about that, but that makes sense. Yeah. That if, if we lose anybody, we have to stop. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we want to vote on the next meeting right now? Yeah. Oh, we don't have any August, August twentieth. On the twentieth. Scheduled for the twentieth. Thursday the 20th? Thursday, August 20th, yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, assuming we're still in a pandemic, I'm gonna, I, I would recommend we stay hybrid like we're doing today, especially since we've already have the equipment up and, and running our will, uh, if that's the case. Um, Brian, you say 
I, I do want to clarify one thing to that, Mr. Strange. Um, we have the equipment here. This is loaner equipment. This is not a permanent solution that's installed. This is the, the equipment that we would install for next month has not been ordered and uh, it's not been installed. And so it's, it's, it's not going to be the same. Um, this is equipment that FOH had on hand. It's their equipment and they're not going to be able to leave it here for the next time. So um, I just want to clarify that. And how long do we think it would take to get the equipment ordered and put in? And what's the cost? And what's the cost? Yeah, we're, we're, we're working on, on that, on those details. I don't, I don't have anything. Uh, we, have, we have good ideas. We believe we can get it all set up and running before the next, before the next uh, meeting. So some of it will, will depend on uh, su you know, the, the supply, what's in stock, and, and, and things like that. And uh, we're also working on the time as far as the, the service hours and things like that going in. So, but, but I'll give you those details as soon as we, we possibly can. Okay. Well, this is a non-budget item now. <laughs> Are we going to give authority to the superintendent up to a certain amount to make sure that we have the money to do it? And I guess that, that's why we just got to get things in the right order. I'm so. hoping it's less than fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Uh, okay. It should be less than fifty thousand. So it's within his budgetary constraints now. Sure. So if we want to continue hybrid, maybe the motion should include uh, seating that authority for the equipment in the media room. Well, we, if you say it's under fifty, we don't have to. Right. Do we, we don't have to do anything. Right now. Right. We we should be good. All right, I'll stand for a motion. I make a motion that we do our next meeting uh, under a hybrid model if possible. If not, we'll be meeting in person. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Did you say something? Did Julie, did you say something? I said, I said aye. Okay. She's did got a little my, delay. Did Michael? Yes. Michael said I. Yes. Okay. Michael says thumbs they up. They got a little delay. He, Get back to him. But did he say he which said, one did you? Did they hear the motion? Too? Yes, they hear the motion. It's a delay on getting back to him. He didn't I, vote for it. He voted for it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Both. Yeah. Did. So it's did, unanimous. No, Julie didn't. No, no she, she said yes. yes. She said yes too. You did. I said yes. Yeah. Okay. Wait, it's so just like we're on Zoom. We can't all talk at the same time. I'm not delayed. We just can't all talk at the same time. Right on. All right, next is uh, personnel matters. Do we need to okay. go into close for anything? No. Uh, did you want to go into closed session? Yes. She, I believe, Leslie wants to go into closed session. Okay, under subsection 074, we're going to go into closed session at this time to discuss personnel matters for the district. The time is 8.09. How are we doing that? Uh, can we clear the room? room? We just clear the room. Everybody clears. So. Do we need everybody to stick around or no? Let them leave. There's not much else on the agenda. There's not much else on the agenda, no. There's nothing to vote on. There's nothing else. to be voted on. Just well, other than approving the hires, agenda. but that's just a courtesy. So. Hmm. We approve the hires, but that's just a courtesy. Thank you all for coming. Well, I think I still Thank have you again, guys. Yeah, you do. Y'all give me the authority, I think so. Yeah. We ready? Yep. Okay, all right, so it's 945. We're back in open session, and we are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> Night all. Thanks again, Brian, for doing all that.